Welcome, yeah. welcome. Hey, everyone, we'll get started in just a minute. But if you want to type in what freedom means to you in the chat, I'd love to, to see that. So we're going to make this freedom pop up card. And um, yeah, feel free to ch chat your thoughts as we approach the 4th of July and in America and um, the last day of Pride Month is today. Um, yeah, hoping for no fireworks, fires from fireworks. Uh, we have banned fireworks here because in Colorado because we have fires already. Love this. Freedom for me is the ability to pursue my passions and fully express who I am. Thanks, Susan. Happiness. Thanks, Evie. Joy to be, to live, to express, to create. Thanks, Jay. Okay, love all these. Good evening to whoever, Christiana in uh, Europe, perhaps. Okay, so, so glad to see you all today. And um, I just want to tell you kind of what we're doing. So first, I just have a short PowerPoint to talk a little bit about my paper year program, which is open for registration for the next 10 days. Um, that'll be short. And then we'll make the freedom pop up card. And then I'll show some examples of projects that we'll be making throughout the rest of the paper year in 2021. And then we'll wrap up and I hope that you'll share your freedom pop up card we will um, hold them up and take some screenshots of all of them. I also invite you to share those on Instagram and tag me Helen Hebert. And by the way, I am also going to launch a giveaway when I reach 4,000 Instagram followers. I have 3,997 right now. So in the next day or so. Uh, so uh, I'm giving away a free one month in the paper year. And I'll give one of those to an Instagram follower that already follows me and then one to someone who joins after the 4,000. So yeah. Um, so if you have any questions at any time, just type them in the chat, please. There's a lot of us here, so we won't be talking to each other, um, maybe at the very end. Okay, so let me tell you a little about the paper year. Okay, I gotta figure out my cursor. So this is the quote that is written around um, that image you just saw of my freedom pop-up card that relates to pride. I love this quote and actually someone in my paper studio Facebook group this morning was asking how to get text onto cards and things, uh, books. Uh, so if you're not a member of that group, it's an interesting discussion and I just hand wrote that text. Um, that's one option, but it doesn't look very professional. Um, so just a little about me. I got interested in paper back in 1986 when I took an art course called paper at the University of Mainz in Germany, where I was on a junior year abroad program. I moved to New York City after I finished college uh, because I loved the energy of the city when I visited it. And I ended up working in the commercial printing and graphic design world for several years. And then I took a brief trip to Japan in 1988 and that reignited my interest in paper specifically. And I decided that I was going to learn how to make it by hand, knowing that they did that in Japan. And little did I know that there was a professional paper making studio called Dudone Paper Mill right there in New York City where I was living. And I ended up working there for six years. Um, I fell into writing how-to books uh, kind of randomly. That's another story. Uh, but I love doing it. And I started writing about hand paper making and paper crafts. And I'm excited to share the cover of my next book on the right here, The Art of Paper Craft. That cover design is by a paper artist, Owen Gilder Sleeve. And the book will come out next February. So I love designing with paper and sharing ideas for transforming it from two into three dimensions. And the Paper Year is a membership program that I started in January to inspire you with a new monthly technique and project. And it's really so much more. In addition to gaining skills for working with paper and other materials, you become part of our paper loving community. 
I'm so inspired by what happens in the online classroom, and I know you will be too. Here are some highlights of what we've done um, throughout the year. So in the first quarter, we did a paper weaving onto a sculpted paper form. Uh, in February, we, we created paper cloth pocketbooks, and it's really fun to see participants variations and the projects made in different papers. Um, they get inspired to do variations on the projects. Um, and in March, we had our first guest artist, Susan Joy Share. Every quarter, we have a guest artist, and she showed us how to make this matchbook structure. And this is a, a variation, a deviation on what she showed us. In April, we did these collapsible collage sculptures, and May was uh, sort of a, I call it a book structure. It can also be a lantern illuminated structure. And in June, we had our second guest ar artist, Alyssa Campbell, and she showed us how to do paper electronics so that you see the electronics on the right there, the uh, copper tape running to a little, uh, a light that lights up in the lighthouse, which you see on the left. So um, every month you receive a PD, no, wait a minute. These are the two plans. There's two plans, the all-in plan for $30 a month and the just the PDFs for $10 a month. And every month you receive a PDF like this with instructions for the monthly technique. And uh, the two plans I just mentioned, uh, the PDF plan, just uh, you just get the PDF. And this group is invited to share what they create in my private Facebook group, The Paper Studio. And then the all in plan includes video instructions and access to my community where we share our work, ask questions, and we also have a monthly zoom meeting kind of like this. And um, here are a couple testimonials I I'll let you read. I don't know if we have any questions, Lori. Uh only that someone said that they get their um, Zoom information in German, but they didn't get any templates. And I just want to remind people that I am dropping into the chat, and I'll do it one more time, uh, a bunch of links that are helpful, including the link to the, uh, the template in case you had a problem. Yeah, let me address that. If you are in another country, I don't know why that is, but I've heard from others that you don't get all of the things that I send because I do send the templates. So in the future, you need to email me and I will send those. Um, I don't know how to do that otherwise. Um, and um, the link for signing up for the paper year is also in the chat along with other links. And we just, all the links are together and I will send you a recording so you'll have those handy. Um, so if you join now, you'll pay by the month. I don't know if you noticed on one of the screens, there was an annual plan. The next annual plan will be offered next January. Um, you save a little money by signing up annually, but, um, if you join right now, you will, you'll pay by the month and you'll sign up for a monthly membership, but you do gain access to the instructions and everything that we've done for the whole year. So that's a kind of a perk that you, you receive the first six months instructions. And um, uh, yeah, there is a question. Okay. Uh, uh, someone is asking, can a person who is unable to press down firmly enough to cut card benefit from the paper year anyway? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, we do a lot of cutting. Why don't you email me a little more details? Because uh, we do cutting, folding, I'm not sure. I can't answer that uh, without a little more information. Okay, so I hope you'll check out the link to the paper year and watch my video about it. There's a little more information on the page and uh, maybe you'll join us and transform paper. Okay. Um, one more thing mm -hmm. in the chat. There's a couple of people saying that they had trouble printing out the pattern, either it wouldn't print or it printed weirdly. I'm not sure. Yeah, don't 
I don't know what to say because uh, many people did not have that problem. So I don't know what's causing that. And um, I will uh, walk you through the project without it. It won't be as perfect without the template, but you can do it. Okay, so um, let's make the freedom pop-up card. Okay. So spotlight my hands, please. Nice. And um, yeah, we're gonna try out polling. I'll get into that in a moment, but we're not sure it's going to work, but I might ask you some questions to either answer a poll or give me a reaction as we move along. So I just wanna show the samples that you've seen online already. So this is kind of my 4th of July variation. Um, the templates, if you downloaded the template, you'll see it's a dandelion card because this structure can be made into many things. So we won't actually do the leaves, but you have the template for them, or you can make your own leaves. So if you wanted to just do all white to represent a dandelion, and then here's the pride version with the Obama quote. Helen, there's, there's one clue about the print issue. Yeah. Uh, uh, Karen is saying if you try to print it from an iPad or, or a, some type of pad device, you get the weird problem. Ah. But if you print it from a laptop or a desktop, then it works. So that's a clue for people having problems. Okay, I'm glad to know that too, so I can answer that question. And by the way, your this circle should be four inches in diameter if you printed it out at 100%. But again, I'm going to try to help you even if you don't have the template right now. And this is being recorded. If you're here today, you will receive the court recording by tomorrow. Okay, so here's the template. Um, you just need to cut out that circle. I forgot to preview that. I'll do that quickly. And um, I just wanted to show you the paper I'm going to use. And I, I didn't put a link to this paper, but I put kind of the name of it because it's a huge, long Amazon link. Um, but this is all a full thing of blue and white double sided. So I like to have the other side um, colored. Let me show you why. No, I can't show you. But if it isn't, you would see some of the white blank side when this is popped up, that's why. I've, um, I've made these all with double-sided papers. So that's why I recommended that. Um, so this is a fun set. And some of them have yellow on the back, some have white, so 200 sheets. And I think there's a 500 sheet pack too. And then I'm using French paper, which is a company I love. So I just wanna plug them. Um, no affiliation though, I, I don't even know anyone there. Um, they sell lots of different plain and decorative card stocks and text papers and envelopes in fun colors in the eight and a half by 11 sort of letter sizes. And so you can buy, you, write, you buy packs of them, 50 sheets or 250 sheets at a time. And that's in the chat, in the link, uh, the links are in the chat. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We are going to fold, you know what? Let me just do one to make sure I fold it the right way. I always do this. I'm like, I gotta remember to make sure I show them which side is on, which side is up. And then I forget. So just don't even worry about what I'm doing yet. Okay, that's not the way. Yeah, that is the way I want it. Okay, so you want your printed side up, like uh, what you want to, show on the inside. Well, that's not a good example. Let me show that other one. Okay, so for example, this blue paper is just plain on the back. I don't want the plain showing. I want the decorative side showing. So that's the side that's up. And you're gonna fold corner to corner, point to point this way. You're gonna unfold that. You're gonna do it the other way, same thing the other way. Um, this is one of the origami base folds, by the way. So now what's really important, this makes this fold really easy and I'm gonna do it four times. So if you don't get it the first time, you'll see it again. Now you flip the paper over and you're gonna fold it in half just once, not twice, this way. Okay, now, so it's folded like that. I'm going to turn it over again 
And when I put my finger in the middle, it sort of wants to automatically do this fold into a triangle. And this is correct. I want that action. So this is what is going to show in my final um, card. So we're going to make four of these. So I'll do it again three more times. So again, pattern side face up, point, uh, make a triangle, two triangles, flip it over, do a fold so it's a rectangle, open that, flip it over again, punt, pu push in the middle, and that kind of guides those folds into the shape I want. So that's my second one, pattern side up, uh, divide into triangle two ways, open that up, flip it over, fold in half the other way, but just once, open it, flip it over again, I've got my guides for folding. Helen, what is the origami base fold called? Somebody, can somebody type that into the chat? I meant to look that up. I don't do a ton of origami, so I forgot. Um, so yeah, sorry, I'll put it in the chat. I mean, I'll put it when I send the replay. Did anybody respond? Does it have a name? Somebody said a triangle base. Okay, uh, that, I'm not sure. Water bomb base? Yeah, water bomb base sounds more like what I think it is. Now, I just wanna say this template is actually designed to be folded and cut itself if you just wanna make a white version of this. So uh, I'll show you what I mean in a second. So let me do my fourth one if you still need a little guide through. I've got the pattern face up. I'm folding in half, making a triangle, opening back, folding the other way. Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to fold it in half to make a rectangle. And then I'm going to open it up, flip it over again. And when I press in the center, it automatically wants to become this smaller triangle, which looks like this. Okay. So now these are the parts we are going to start with the four. We're going to do the same thing four times again. Um, let's try the poll and see if people are ready to move on. We did a test before and it didn't work. So I'm not positive. Are you doing that, Lori? Yes, it just launched. Okay. I don't see it. Can somebody? You have you have to click more for go into your chat to see it. It doesn't pop up automatically, but if you go into more or chat, you'll see it. Oh. Okay. So uh, someone confirmed. All right. Okay. So, so I can't see anything. You see the results. Yes, we have uh, 10 people, roughly 10% are saying they would like a little more time. Um, How many said they're done? Yes. Uh, 78 said that they're done. Okay. Oh, that's a pretty good number. So I'm going to, I'm just going to show something with the circle. If you're still working, go ahead and keep working. So um, this just has all the diagrams of how to do this. Um, and you can go ahead and do it. I want you to, to do this. Um, so yeah, what I just said, I think we should all move on to folding this now. So sorry, I was, that wasn't right. Okay, so you want to do a, a two valley folds. This is just what we were doing with these wider, fatter dotted lines, dashed lines, valley, it's the same thing we just did, but it's on a circle instead of a square. And then 
I'm going to do the other way. I'm kind of using my, I'm watching that the, I can see the dotted dash line through my paper and lining it up with the one that's underneath here to get it really accurate. Open that all the way. So I've got those two, two uh, valley folds. I'm going to flip it over. So it's confusing to have mountain and valley. I'm going to flip it over and do another valley fold, but that will make it a mountain fold in relation to what I've just done. So now I'm going to take these two um, ends of these lines and I'm going to match them up to the ends underneath. That's uh, how you get it accurate. You also have the line printed there. Okay, and then I'm going to open that and I do the same thing when I pop this. We're going to do it again because I did it the wrong way. I can't believe that template is wrong. Sorry guys. Okay, you're going to reverse all of those folds. So we're going to start again. We are going to valley fold this. Valley fold the other way. I need this on the outside is what I'm trying to get. I know I'm confusing some of you. Okay, so this is what you're going for. You want these on the outside. Let me go over it one more time. So I start with this up. Is that right? I don't even know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, you guys, this is so funny. I've taught this a lot, but okay. How many, let's, uh, I hope a bunch of you have this done. So you basically, you want it to look like this. I'm sorry, talking through it is a little tricky. Um, so let's, let's do another of that same poll and see how many are ready. I know someone got it. They wrote in the chat. Thank you. <laughs> okay. It just launched. Okay. So basically you have folds on all the lines and then you're pushing this in. And we're going to use this as our template. Um, somebody is asking to show it again, please. Okay. I just can't remember which side I start with up. Okay. Okay. And why is it? Um, so I have my printed side face down and I'm going to fold in half along a dashed line. Open that up again. Fold in half on the other dashed line. Open it up. Flip it over. Now I'm going to fold it on the dotted line this way. I'm going to open it up, flip it over, press in the center, and it's going to come into this shape. Maybe your pattern is printed on the back, flip it over if it is. Um, and you should be able to see this, okay? Um, now this can be an actual petal. So this is exactly what we're making. Um, if you don't have any paper, if you're just joining us and didn't uh, have anything, but you printed out the template, you will use this and create four of these and it will make like the, the white dandelion card I showed. Okay. But we're just, we're going to use it as a guide. So now I've got my, one of my triangular pieces and I'm going to put this on here like this. And I'm going to do this four times. So maybe just watch me this time. Don't do anything. I'm going to cut around. And so now I've got the same thing. See? So now I've got two of them. Now I'm cutting through a lot of layers of papers, but my papers are all thin. So you're going to have to gauge. So if you didn't print out the template, if you can kind of copy what I did, um, this is a four inch circle at the end. So this is, this should be two inches, right? The diameter or the radius. 
is two inches. So just make a circle as well as you can. So we're gonna do that again with all the other sheets. So I've got, you'll end up with four. Okay, and I just wanna show you, this is kind of fun. You, you have four of these. So if you're a book artist, um, I haven't really played with these, but you could make something out of these because they're identical by connecting them or I don't know folding them again so you can play with those later and design something. Helen um, just a reminder to people that this is being recorded so uh, Helen will be sending you the link to the recording after the uh, class. Yes yeah that'll be either later today or by tomorrow at the latest. Okay, so moving right along. Um, what's really important here is this little quarter circle. We do not wanna cut in there because that would make everything fall apart. So that is what holds um, the structure together that we're making. And what we're doing is we're gonna cut and remove all these gray areas. So um, different people are more agile at cutting. Uh, so you'll just see what yours looks like and um, how it's going. And maybe you don't wanna cut all of the gray. You could cut just a couple if they feel like they're running into each other. But you see what I'm doing is I'm cutting right up to that circle, that quarter circle, and then I'm gonna remove all those little bits. And there's a lot of them because I have the, uh, the template. There should be like eight, I think eight layers. So I'm going to just, um, now if people have questions, it's a good time. Um, what size is the center circle? Oh, that's about a half inch from here going out this way, half inch. Uh, Cause I'm going to do this four times. Now I'm going to save my same template because you only printed one. Um, you, need, you need that template again. Okay, I'm at my last, my last one. Okay, so. So now here's what it looks like when you unfold it. Don't unfold it all the way though, because we're gonna make it into the pop-up. So, you know, you just cut through all those layers and you have lots of petals or firework, whatever you would call those. So in here, it's fun because I have the, the pattern of the paper. Um, Okay, so moving right along. I am going to take that same thing now. Now I won't have to cut through as many layers and I'm gonna use that as a template again. Um, I have, you know, if you were gonna do this again, you could print this out and cut just one single layer, that one quarter. I should have mentioned that before. Um, but I just, I like having the option of using that as an actual petal, but there's no reason you need those four layers. Okay, so now I'm just gonna use that as a guide to cut my next. And if you kind of get what you're doing, you don't even have to use it. So this is what I was telling you all sort of cutting freeform who didn't weren't able you're cutting one two three four about five 
five of these. Four would work fine too. Um, I'm going to show you something else on the next one. Okay, so my second one's done. It's actually easier if you get the hang of it without that template. If you want to, you could draw the little circle guide because that will be hidden in the final piece. We're going to glue there. So um, that shows up pretty well on my dark paper. I can see that pencil line. So that's another option to help with accuracy. So I cut up to that quarter circle. Okay. All right, so now I've got three and see these are going, we're going to put these together eventually like this into a circle. So I have one more to do. Okay, there's my final one. All right, um, in about a minute, Lori, let's do another poll and see where we're at. Okay. So again, if you didn't hear this before, um, we've got all the links in the chat, including the link to the template. So if you had issues uh, printing it out, uh, if you were on an iPad or other device, try using doing it from your laptop. That seems to work better. And there's a link for more information about the paper year and the papers I'm using. Yeah, interesting. So some people printed it out on their MacBook Pro, which is what I also have. And the circle came out 2.5 inches at 100%. I don't know. I don't know how to, well, I'm not a tech person and I have a MacBook and mine prints out at four inches. So apologies. That would be really small to try to work from. I hope you're trying to uh, just wing it with me here. Okay, did you do the poll or can we? Oh, uh, not yet. Um, I will relaunch. Okay, here it goes. Um, okay, so somebody says you have to print it at 125% in portrait mode, according to her math based husband. Um, a couple of people have mentioned, and I think I might have noticed this as well, I'm not 100%, that 
It's not a PDF? What? It's not a PDF, it's a JPEG. Uh, okay, okay. That might be, I did notice that it looked different when I was uploading it. So, sorry, my tech bad. So that might be the root of the issue. So I will make sure Yeah. next time it's a PDF. Thanks, Sarah. Mm -hmm. And apologies. Uh, uh, the link will be on this chat, yes. And you'll receive a copy of the chat. Um, I'm gonna drop it in one more time. Uh, I mean, I'll keep dropping it in, but it's there right now for anybody who wants it. Okay, I will send the, the um, template as a PDF with the recording too. So you don't have to worry about all that other stuff. Um, so uh, somebody's asking, are we cutting out the spaces between the petals or are we cutting out the shaded area? Cutting out the shaded area. So here's my template. I cut all the shaded areas out. Okay, so um, we're still getting responses, but we're at 92 total responses and out of um, 100 and 19 possible, I think it is. Um, anyway, um, uh, 95. So we have uh, six people saying that they would like a little bit more time. Okay. Sorry, you six people. That's not very many in the scheme of things. We're going to move on. Um, because you'll, you'll see what you need to do for everything else. So I need to find my uh, folded card. Okay. So now you should have a folded uh, card. This is 10 inches. Sorry, I don't have metric by, I'm just seeing, I do on my 10 inches or 24 centimeters by seven inches, which is uh, 16 and a half centimeters and it's folded in half. And that's going to be the base. And now you have to make a decision where do you want your firework or puffball or whatever it is to, uh, to be. Um, it can't be up beyond the edge. I mean, it could be, but I would keep it within the card. So it could be a little higher up or it could be right in the center. And um, you can you know, set these on there and kind of visualize it. Uh, you can be really accurate and measure and mark. I'm gonna just put a little mark of where the top, I'm gonna to center mine and that's gonna mark the top and I'll just start there and then put everything else on. So now I'm gonna take my glue stick and this is a really, I'm not in my studio. This is a really crappy glue stick. I don't recommend this one. There's some Japanese ones and Yoohoo. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're going to put glue on one side of, of your uh, quarter circle. So I'm, I'm gonna put it, this is how I wanna glue it down. So I wanna put it on this side. And then when I glue it, I'm going to glue it just a hair outside of that center line because this is gonna open and close. And I'm gonna have two of these with all those layers. So I want just a little bit of space in there. You see that little red space. Okay, but not too much. All right, so here I go. And you wanna to try to only get glue. Something that happens frequently with this is that the glue somehow migrates to the other layers. So you really just want it on that top layer. And now I'm gonna glue it down just a little to the side of that. Uh, my score line. Okay. And then you can kind of fluff this up to make sure no other layers are sticking down. Okay. And now you need to watch what I'm doing and just determine whether you do it with me or um, you're going to watch it later or um, 
you need to, need to watch and then do. Because so now I'm putting glue on this one, which I visualized going here. And I'm gonna put that one here. So I'm starting to create my circle. Um, you're gonna want the centers to line up pretty well. And mine's a little taller for some reason here. So I'm just gonna pay attention to the center that they're all four symmetrical in the center. You can see a little piece sticking down. Okay, fluff that up. Now this one will go here. So I'm going to lift it up, put glue on the underside. This is all pretty symmetrical, so I think I could put it on any side. By the way, this fold we did is also uh, a map fold. You know how those maps of certain cities that fold up? The center part is the same, that fold up uniquely. Um, they're not circles. The maps are never circles. There's the rectangles and they have some other folds in them as well. Okay, there's number three. And then the fourth one is going to fit right in there. Would using a brush to apply glue, would that help is a question. Well, I don't really recommend liquid glue for this because uh, the origami paper is so thin. So I'm not going to say no, but that's why I use a glue stick. Uh, if you're really adept using liquid glue in a brush, you could try it. Okay. And I'm glad you brought that up because I am going to show something with the next step. All right, I'm going to give you a minute to catch up with me. Um, just if you're done, type in the chat. We're not quite done, we have another step. Um, just say, I'm ready, because I'm sure we're like all over the place. Okay, a couple, several people are done. Okay, good. All right, so, even if you're not ready, I think you see where we're going. Um, so now what you want, you're gonna do the last step is to connect the two sides so that this doesn't open like this, that these are connected. And um, what I do is I just put glue in the centers, okay? And this is where um, things can go awry as well. And actually the person that mentioned using glue. I'm going to do this, but you can do this with a glue stick. Just don't be heavy handed. This is a light paper. It sticks together pretty well. But what I'm going to do, I find with this glue applicator, I can get just a small dot and make that connection. Sometimes when I'm doing the glue here, it seems to migrate out. So you just want it in the center. Glue stick works fine. And then you're going to fold this together you're going to press in the center to adhere that glue. And you want to open it up. You don't want to let that sit forever. You want to open it up and make sure it's working, that you're getting that stuck together, that um, you can kind of still do that fluff, fluff, fluffing and ruffling in case any glue got into errant places. And there is my firework, dandelion, flower, what have you. Okay, so it's kind of 3D. And then um, you could add a stem or leaves. You could add text. Um, you know, if you were going to do this with text again, you might print that onto your card first before you put the flower on there or the firework. Um, that's what I would do. So that might, it takes some planning. In other words, if you're gonna add other elements. So woohoo. Um, let me see. I wanna still, I still wanna have my hand spotlight and you guys can see what I've done. 
Let me know if you have any questions. If you are done, uh, you could hold up your card. I'd love to see it. We've got about 10 minutes left. Oh, awesome. Susan, that looks great. Eugenie did a white one. Fun, fun. Okay, I gotta scroll to other screens. Mary, beautiful. Jane, yay. Christiana, nice. Karen, Lori, I see them. Lisa, so fun with all the different colors. Okay, we're gonna do a photo in a moment. So if you don't have your video on and are willing to have it on, I would love that. And um, let's see, I'm going to show you a couple of the projects that we're making in the next months of the paper year. Bev, great. We're not doing the photo yet. Let me show you. We're just getting ready. I'm going to show you what we'll be doing throughout the rest of the year. So um, this is the July project. It's a mini photo album and we're using envelopes to, to make our uh, the structure of the album. And then we have a piano hinge binding with uh, bamboo skewers. So, and this is a project that can be as many pages as you want it to be. And it can be displayed in multiple ways like this or like a book. And so that's the July project, which begins the first, the projects start on the first Monday of each month. So July 5th. And registration is only open now through July 10th. Um, in August, we have a guest artist, Paula Beardell Krieg. Some of you might know her. She's a fabulous book artist. And so we're going to be working with wallpaper. Um, you source your own supplies too in this, in this program. So if you can't find wallpaper, you could do other paper, of course. But this is a wallpaper pocketbook. So they have these cool pockets. This cover is made from one sheet which is something I love, how to transform one sheet of paper into something. You can stitch pages in. Um, you can make multiple pieces. Let me show you another example. Um, Paula sent me a bunch of samples. Uh, so you can stitch the structure into itself and onto different parts. So this is a really fun one where there's lots of pages that are just uh, smaller and larger versions of the same structure put together with a fun binding. Um, September's project is too big for me to show you. So I'm just going to show you a picture of it. Um, we're going to take little squares or triangles or octagons of paper and connect them together to make something that you can hang in a window or on your wall with a curtain little curtain clips. And this is actually stapled together, but we'll talk about different fasteners, which is another one of my fascinations. Um, October, we'll have another guest artist, Sean Sheehy, a pop-up paper engineer wizard. And watch this, it's a little skull. You can actually put a tea light inside and it lights up. So that's a different kind of pop-up. And November, we're going to do a book structure, which is, um, it's like an expanding accordion on the back. I know I don't have a lot of space here. And then you actually, you can hand stitch or I ran them through the sewing machine. I love thinking about ways to use my sewing machine. So each signature is stitched in and each signature has a unique cover and then just regular pages. So talk about different ways to um, create a book. And then the final project in December is um, a shadow screen. So we'll make a stencil. This is a cut paper stencil and uh, use balsa wood and then you have just a plain piece of paper on the other side. And I don't think I'm going to be able to show you how this works, but when this is put in a window or you have a light behind it 
a shadow is cast from the cutout onto the other side. Can you cut, you can kind of see that, see that? And this hinge is a cool Japanese hinge that folds in both directions. So that's what we're doing throughout the rest of the paper year. Um, please type any questions you have in the chat and then um, let's, let's take some photos. Uh, uh, Helen, there's a question about uh, the, the starburst petals. Yeah. Uh, will it work with rounder petal shapes? So you mean out at the edge here? That's yes. Yes, I tried it actually with pointy. So you could point, let me just try it here. It's just uh, how good you are at cutting at this scale. So you could point the ends. Obviously you could make this bigger too. Um, you could do pointed or yeah, here, let me do rounded. Okay. You could, yeah, just experiment. Look, I could cut in and do a little divot here. You have to see what it ends up looking like. I can't pre-visualize that, whether it's uh, worth it. You know, the pointy were visible. I think the rounded would be visible. Look more like, a, I don't know, carnation or a mom maybe. I'm not sure this one I just did will be that interesting. So yeah, try it out. Okay. So what's the best way to do this, Lori? Um, Let's everybody hold up there. Okay, I'm going to remove your spotlight for right now. Oh, yeah, I don't go to gallery. Um, and are you going to do the screenshot or do you want me to? Um, yeah, I want you to. Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm going to do. We've got five screens, so let me. This is so fun. Oh, I love the one with the black oh, background, Judy. Judy awesome. Black. So, okay. Ellery. Oh, Louisa did a really fun center. Um, I'll try to include these photos, but scroll through your screens. Make sure you're in gallery view and um, just hold them up for another minute. Wow, someone not cut all the leaves out, made the dandelion. Um, and leader, I love your little accents. You, she used the cutouts, those little petal cutouts and surrounded her flower with those. It's beautiful. Um, this is what I love about the paper year is everyone has a different interpretation and comes up with different ideas once you start. So you get so much inspiration. I'm curious about Heather's, Heather Mallet. Um, it looks like there's some dimension to the leaves. I'm going to, is it okay if I spotlight Heather? Yeah, I see it too. It might just be the pattern. I oh, the it's, pattern. it's the paper. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, and, and uh, Karen notes that it would be uh, cool with magazine pages. Yes, yeah, so many possible. Um, I'm going back to gallery. Is there any other one that uh, you particularly want me to spotlight? Um, let me go back to gallery. Um, who was the one that, uh, that put the little thingies? I can't remember now, so no. Somebody... <laughs> Here's a cute one. Somebody's added uh, more Oh, fancy. Fun. Watercolor, right? That's beautiful. Yeah. Can you take a screenshot, Lori? Yes. Let's do a couple <laughs> screenshots of... Uh-huh. Uh, okay. And you guys, it's one o'clock, or my, my yeah. time. It's the top of the hour if you need to. Um, Thank you so much for coming. Happy 4th of July. Oh, yeah. beautiful. Um, was there another one that you wanted to, me to get a screenshot of just that one? Well, I can't remember now. So. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, there was a question about gluing. Could you just talk about uh, where you're putting the glue one more time? Yeah, for the final. And I'm going to spotlight glue. one more time. Okay. 
Um, it's hard for me to show now because I've got this together, but the final glue just went in the center circle. So just in those areas where on the pattern here, just here on all four. So just within that, you don't want it to go out too far because you end up sticking other layers together and it can become a real mess. I mean, I invite you to perfect what I've shown you. It, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I do have found that just putting the glue in that center circle works the best. Okay, well, thanks so much for coming, everyone. That was fun. Have a great 4th of July. And um, I'll see you around. Let me know if you have questions about the paper year. And uh, see you on online again soon. Bye.